We are fortunate tonight to have with us Emmy Award-winning documentary filmmaker Rory Kennedy. Tonight she'll be presenting her newest film, Ethel, which premiered at the 2012 Sundance Film Festival and won the Audience Award for Best Documentary. This latest documentary focuses on the remarkable life of her mother, Ethel Kennedy, the politically dynamic wife of RFK and single mother who raised Rory and her 10 older siblings. It is an extraordinary film and I know you'll enjoy watching it tonight. I want to mention that following the film, please don't leave. I will do my best impression of James Lipton as we stage our very own inside the actor's studio and I will be asking Rory questions that you give me. Please join me in giving a warm USF and Tampa welcome to Rory Kennedy. watch the film. I really appreciate it. Um, I just briefly wanted to um, thank the University of South Florida for hosting me tonight and Dean Eisenberg for having me here. It's such a thrill for me to be showing this film to you all and sharing it with you. And then also to thank a few people who made the film possible. Uh, this is a documentary that I developed with HBO. They they asked me to do, uh, Sheila Nevins, who runs the documentary department there, approached me about doing a film about my mother, and I said, no, absolutely not, <laughs> no way. And she um, was very persistent, and she kept saying yes, 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 and I kept saying no, no, no. And then I thought, well, you know what, I'll just ask my mother, and she'll say no, because she hasn't uh, done an interview in about 25 years, and, and um, she's never told the story of her life, and it really isn't so comfortable for her, so I knew she would say no. Anyway, I asked her, and then she said yes. <laughs> really? Are you sure you want to do this? Um, so uh, I then asked her later, why did you say yes? And she said, because you asked me. So uh, <laughs> a little bit circular, but um, so here we are. So I was a little bit, um, I was, it was, I was, it was daunting to make this film for me on a whole range of levels, but Having now made it and it's now done, I'm very happy I did, and it was a real gift. So I want to thank my siblings who participated in the film, and I couldn't have done it without them. And of course, my mother, Ethel, she hates her name, so every time I say the name of the film, it makes her cringe. And uh, she, you know, she does. She is uncomfortable doing these types of things, so I know she did it because of me. So I'm so grateful to her, and I'm so grateful to all of you for coming out. And I look forward to answering your questions and having a discussion after the film. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. That was spectacular. Oh, thank you. Spectacular, right? Thank you. <laughs> Rory, we have a, a little time to hear from you a little bit more about the, uh, the behind-the-scenes insights about it. And we have questions from uh, the audience that have been submitted. And the first question is, having made the movie, what was the best part about making the movie, and what was the biggest challenge? Well, that's a good question to start off with. Um, well, I would say the best part of uh, making the movie was probably having made it. Having made it. <laughs> Being made. done. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was a challenging um, project for me. I've made a number of documentaries, but because of the personal nature of this film, and I, I think there's obviously been a lot of joy, and, um, you know, my family, we've had such a wonderful life, but there's also been moments of great sadness, and I know it's going to be hard to ask my mother and my siblings to kind of revisit those moments and then for me to be in the edit room and have to kind of revisit them myself and so that was certainly the hardest part of making this film um, and then I also felt an added responsibility just because it is you know my siblings and my mother and my family um, so it was I think emotionally challenging for that reason. Sure. What, uh, what, another question that people had is, uh, you've been making documentary films for some time. What was it that got you interested in that as a, as a career? Well, I started making documentaries really as 
uh, out of a passion for uh, social justice. I um, was a women's studies major in college and did my final paper about women and substance abuse and the difficulties that pregnant women have trying to get drug and alcohol treatment. And at that time, there was a lot of stories in the press about um, crack moms having crack babies and these women were being thrown into prison. And I found when I was doing my final paper on this that a lot of these women had tried to get treatment and had been denied care because they were pregnant. Nine out of 10 of them statistically had tried. And so what I was seeing in the press was very different than what I was finding on the ground. And I felt that if these women could tell their own stories, that it could raise awareness about what was really going on and create more compassionate policies than what was happening at the time, which is throwing these women in jail. And so I decided to get a camera and interview them, and I made my first film, which was called Women of Substance. Mm -hmm. And I loved making them and, and have been doing it ever since. Fantastic. Um, one of the uh, audience asks uh, about, it seems from the movie that, that um, part of what you're trying to say is that your mother was such a central part to, to your life, and yet a lot of times the media focused on, on your father. Um, is that uh, something that, that you were trying purposely to communicate, that somehow her role in the family was, was overlooked? Well, you know, it's not that my father doesn't deserve a huge amount of credit, as my sister Carrie says, for everything that he does, has done. But I do think that, and he had accomplished so much in his life, and so it's not about kind of taking it away from him as much as shining some light on what was happening in her life and, and what contributions she made um, to both our family, to us as individuals, as well as to him and helped support him in, in the decisions that he made and the role that he ended up playing. And that there was really a, it was really a partnership on, on a pretty fundamental level. And I think that's been under, under recognized. And, you know, I do, I mean, you know, I asked my sister Courtney that question in the beginning of the film of, you know, do, do, how do you feel when you're introduced to Robert Kennedy's daughter, which happens to me all the time. I had never talked to her about it, but, you know, I'm always like, well, I'm always also Ethel Kennedy's daughter, so, you know, and then you kind of see that your other, you know, the siblings have the same experience, and, and that is something that I feel like as a culture, you know, we're all prone to do it, and even learning about my own family, I absolutely learned about it, you know, through the lens of my father and the contributions he made and, you know, saw it through that lens as well. But I also had another perspective of living with my mother and saw firsthand what she did and how she contributed to my life. So at the very least, I felt like that story could be, should be told. And then, of course, you know, looking back through history and the role that she really played, in these historical moments, even in even though it was in the background, um, that it still should be recognized. I think. Well, and it seemed, you know, at the end of the film, you you sort of close the film by trying to get her to sort of agree with you and acknowledge that fact, and, and she she won't she do it. She can't. She can't, can't do, do it. it. She, I just don't want to take that credit. Yeah. So that, that's, that, was, that was interesting. Telling. I think. Was there anything, you know, I, I think about what it would be like to make a movie about any, any, about one's own family. I mean, what a brave thing to do. Were there any things that you learned from making the film that, you, that were genuinely news to you? Secrets or things that came out that... There were, you know, there were. I think that, um, I think first of all, to be, you know, I sat down with my mother to do this interview. It was over the course of five days, and I was mm -hmm. able to ask her every question I've ever wanted to ask and to be able to sit down with all my siblings and ask them all these questions. And because I'm the youngest of 11, you know, my oldest sister, Kathleen, sibling, is 18 and a half years older than I am. And so her experiences and that of my older siblings is much different than what mine was or that of my younger siblings, Chris, Max, and Douglas, and I kind of grew up together. So, you know, to kind of be able to sit down and ask them those questions of what it was like, what was, you know, all of, not only these historical events, but living at the house, Virginia, and Cape Cod, and kind of these different experiences is profoundly insightful and, and wonderful. And so, you know, 
the first question was, was what was the best part of this experience? And really, I have to say that it was sitting down and being able to kind of explore that, and it's such a privilege, and, and I feel so lucky, absolutely lucky to have done that. And then in the course of that, there were certainly things that were revealed to me. I didn't know my mother bet on horses every day. <laughs> for example, in college. Um, but there were, you know, I didn't know my aunts dated McCarthy. I, that was interesting <laughs> too. And um, there were other moments, you know, that again, it's sort of more of an adjustment where, for example, I had always, you know, with the Hoffa hearings and Jimmy Hoffa, I'd always read about my father's role and how, what courage he had to stand up to Jimmy Hoffa and, you know, the, the kind of contribution he made. And I myself had never seen it through my mother's eyes. So to then ask her and to kind of, and my siblings, and to get a sense of what was going on and the, the real threats to my mother, the threats to my father, the threats to my siblings, what it was like, you know, to have 11 children, how I would feel my husband was doing something where my children were threatened, you know, if I was threatened, how I would stand up to that, what, what I would do in those circumstances, that's scary. And then you see the reporter with acid on his face and you see the real consequence of these threats and the kids having to go to school every day with security, you know, there's a lot of anxiety there and that's nerve wracking and to, um, you know, just appreciate it. So it's kind of a, it's an adjustment of the lens, of the perspective a bit, you know, to kind of add a new dimension to clearly a story that's been told before in lots of different capacities. But I, I hope that coming from this unique perspective and a perspective that hasn't been shared, that it offers some insight that, you know. Oh, I, I, yeah, I think um, it's been told before, but not in this kind of a contextualized way. I, I, I don't know what, what all of you thought, but I, I just felt the, uh, the brilliance and the humor of, of, of all the family members was, was so incredible throughout, you know, the way in which they would relate to you and, and right. comment on things that I thought was extraordinary. Make fun of me. And make fun of Well, <laughs> I didn't want to put it that way, but yeah, that was kind of fun. Even as a baby, right? Yeah. Um, were there any things, did you have to make any agreements before you made the film where people said, we will not talk about this, and Rory, if you ask this, I'm going to, you know, storm out of the room. Storm out of the room. Was no, there, any of that? there was none of that. Everybody, um, it was, you know, including my mother, there was no limitations as to what I could ask and what I couldn't ask. And um, they were really, you know, they were really both trusting and open and willing and able. Okay, that's just, amazing. Uh, just a couple more. Uh, Don wants to know, uh, there are a number of students here who are interested in becoming documentary filmmakers. Would you encourage them, discourage them? What would you say to them? Absolutely, I would encourage you to become a documentary filmmaker. I love being a documentary filmmaker. Um, I think it's the, the best career path you could ever possibly have. Um, I feel like I learn something new every day in my job. That it's a, it's a it's a life um, it's a lifetime uh, commitment, and uh, I think there's nothing better. I think it's. Um, if you want to make a lot of money, you might not want to choose it as a career, um, but there's nothing more rewarding. Was there uh, another like uh, second choice uh, c profession that you were thinking of pursuing? If you couldn't have done this, you would have become a uh, I don't, you know, I was, I was interested in media and news, um, mm -hmm. so I may have uh, kind of veered in that direction a little bit more. Um, and I also, you know, I thought about going to law school. Uh, those were sort of the, the things that I was thinking about at the, that time. But anyway, I fell into this and happy, happy that I did. Well, the final question is from Don. He wants to know what's next for you. What's the, what's the, what's next, the next project? project? What are you, are, are, is that the kind of person you are? Are you already thinking of the next thing? Or? I am. I'm actually starting production next week on a documentary, a feature length documentary about the final days of Vietnam with uh, American Experience, which is on PBS. That's great. Well, Rory Kennedy, I really want to thank you. We all want to thank you. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. See you at the next event.